Hello and welcome to welcome back to chapter seven, video two. All right, so don't forget to take your notes and submit them when we're ready. When we're done, actually. All right, so we're left off with by an operations. There are two different types of communications that a service provider can offer you: switch circuit communications, and the other one is um, packet switching. So. Write the following down with circuit switching network. Circuit switching is when the ISP establishes a dedicated circuit between the sender and the receiver. That's it. Examples for that is the PSTN and ISDN. And both of them will use PPP as the frame that travels on the circuit uh, on the on the circuit switching. So point-to-point -point protocol is the type of framing that is used when you are um, Communicating over communicating over a circuit switched network. Uh, packet switching, on the other hand, I want you to write that down, is when an ISP allows the clients to share the links. Okay? Each packet traveling on the network will have labels to differentiate between the different clients. Much less expensive than circuit switching. Examples of that um, Metro Ethernet, MPLS, Frame Relay, old ATMs. Um, then you got the, the SDH, Sonat, and the DWDM. So the SDH, write this down, the synchronous digital hierarchy, this is at layer one standard we're talking about, is a global standard for transporting data over fiber optic cables. The Sonat, which stands for synchronous optical network networking, is the North America standard. The SDH is for the rest of the world and the sonnet is specifically for north america and it provides also the same services as sdh so sdh and sonnet they define how to transfer multiple data voice and video communications over fiber optic using lasers and light emitting diodes over great distances isps love to use the sonnet and the sdh when they want to communicate from different ISPs together because that's where you're aggregating all the connections. For example, from the northeast, they want to send data to the southeast. They'll use the Sonat connections. Even though now we have uh, enterprise networks that would want to use uh, Sonat and SDH to um, to transfer their data over the um, for their uh, uh, for their um, WAN connection. Then you got the Dense Wave Division Multiplex in DWDM. This is a newer technology that increases the data carrying capacity of Sonnet and SDH by simultaneously sending multiple streams of data, multiplexing using different wavelengths of light. So please write that last statement down for DWDM. All right, so let's talk about the traditional WAN connection. This is the old way. A service provider will offer you options. You can go dedicated. You know, dedicated line means that no one else uses that physical wire between you and the destination. And the example of that is the T1 or the European 1 lines or T3 European 3 lines. Um, if you don't want dedicated, which could be very expensive, then you might choose and switched. Switched networks, either you did dial up with the old plain old telephone system or an integrated service digital network, ISDN. These are also old and no longer used. There are some still dial-ups around in ISDN, especially if you are not close to a city where there's, you know, you only have a regular plain old telephone system where you don't even, you don't even have cable or anything like that. So you probably end up going to have, you know, um, a dial-up connection. Well, you may use uh, packet switching. So the old frame relays and ATMs may be used in that case. Um, so when it comes to T lines, I just want to make sure we get that down. When it comes to T line, please write the following down, the last two bullet points. The T1 lines are for use in North America. A T1 line is 1.544 megabits per second. T3 lines is 28 T1s, and that gives you approximately 45 megabit, megabits per second. Um, this is the actual, but theoretically, 
you get close to 45 megabits, if, especially if you're not going to use any voice packets. Um, a T, an E is, is a European equivalent of a T1, but it gives you a little bit more bandwidth, 2.048 megabits. And the E3 is 34.36. All right, so uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of leased lines? Okay, so just write these down. So you can take a snippet of them if you want, or just write simplicity, quality, and availability is the advantages, uh, the cost, and the limited flexibility is the disadvantages. All right, you got the public uh, service telephone networks. That's the old dial-up. The integrated service digital network that is uh, when you had the, you know, in the old days when you used the modem and you wanted to connect using the plain old telephone system, the BSDN, you had, you know, you had to convert from digital to analog and from analog to digital. So it was very slow. So then they designed a whole network where you don't have to do this. You don't have to, you don't have to use a modem that connected you, converted your digital data to analog and from analog back to digital so they went for integrated digital services you were getting 64 kilobits per line so you had the bare channel you know you had the um basic rate integrated bre channel and then you have the primary bri then you had the old uh frame relay uh very very slow um not used as much that's also gone in the old i think it might be still used in all third world countries if i'm not mistaken but that's really not used anymore atms was big in the night in the early 1990s uh, instead of using frames they used actually and frames can be 1500 bytes now each uh the data that you're sending out is 53 bytes and 53 bytes is a lot less than 1,518 Ethernet frame in comparison. And because you're sending us such small, what we call cells, the 53 byte cells, they can move very, very fast. And it was big for voice video because they almost had zero delay. Um, it was a metropolitan area network protocol, by the way. All right, so now we're going to the model, modern WANs. So in today's WANs, um, mostly you're going to go over the internet to connect. So you can have you can have either optical um, fiber, even DSL is nowadays pretty much legacy. You got cable, you got cellular connection, wireless or satellites, but they all travel over the internet and they interconnect with each other very easily. All right, so here's an updated uh, modern WAN connectivity. You still, you know, you can be dedicated using broadband and you can get on the dark fiber. You might be switched and most likely either you're going to use Ethernet WAN and MPLS. We're talking about gigabit connection. All right. So, uh, and the good thing about that is you get a dedicated, well, not a dedicated circuit. This is just like as if you are in a LAN environment, especially if you're using the Ethernet WAN. And then you got uh, then you got internet base going over the internet. Now, if you're going to do that, you need a VPN connection for security purposes. Uh, the problem with in, the only the drawback of connecting over the internet is that you're still prone to denial of service attacks. But security is not an issue in terms of somebody eavesdropping and reading your data, and the speed is not that bad either. And it's the least expensive because the internet is always there. Uh, you may use DSL cable optical fiber if you want to go wire. For wireless, you may have the Wi-Fi, cellular, WiMAX, or cellular or satellite internet. So either one of those connection, you still need a VPN to get you on the internet. Uh, you can go privately if you don't want to use the internet and you worried about. Um, some uh, denial of service attacks, you may choose, let's say, MPLS. You still have to pay a fee, but you're guaranteed a certain connection, a certain speed, you're guaranteed security, 
and all the goodies. Uh, or you can be dedicated. You know, you can have a fiber directly connected to your destination and no one else uses that fiber. This is the most expensive way of going. All right. Uh, if you can take a picture of this, that would be great. All right. So you do have a PowerPoint presentation. So take a snippet of this. Put it in your notes. All right. So, so that's that. Let's move on. And the NPLS. The NPLS, please write this down, is a high, just the first sentence at least, is a high-performance service provider when routing technology to interconnect clients without regard to the access method or payload. So uh, MPLS will support Ethernet, DSL, you name it. So depending on how you get on the, on the private cloud, it doesn't matter if you're using DSL cable or FIOS, you still, you still, you still be able to use the MPLS cloud. They can encapsulate all types of protocols, including IPv4 and IPv6 packets. So these are specifically, um, what do you call them, um, MPLS routers. So the PE is the provider edge that takes your data from you, and then they pass it on to the, the, the internal provider router. And uh, all they do is, by the way, they look at your destination, and they put a label, so they are called shims. And on the label, they'll be able to route your packets according to the labels till they get to the destination. Something similar to the old frame relay, right? MPLS provides services for quality of service support, traffic engineering, redundancy, and VPNs. So it's very powerful, very fast, secured, and the um, and the speed is there. So that's the preferred method for wired connections. The only other, the competition to this is the Metro Ethernet. But the problem, Metro Ethernet doesn't go as far. You have to be close enough within a city limit to get some sort of a connection. There's a lot of hops that you have to go through. The good thing about Metro Ethernet is uh, everybody knows Ethernet and the protocol and how it works. And it's much easier to transfer Ethernet lands into the Metro Ethernet when you get on the WAN. All right, uh, the internet base, we talked about that, I think a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. Then you got, okay, so let's go through some of these. You got the DSL. Uh, the DSL has limited bandwidth, please write that down. And they offer you only uh, data and voice over the old telephone wires, right? The digital subscriber line, so write that down. Then you got the, then it goes through the DSL and it goes through the DSL, the DSLAM, the DSL access multiplexer. You have to be close enough to the DSLAM to be able to connect. Um, then you got, now what they do is they encapsulate your packet into a PPP DSL, point to point protocol. All right. You can either use PPP over Ethernet, can be deployed. Um, so you can do both of those. What else do you need to know? Cable TV, cable connection, not cable TV. Cable is bandwidth is shared by many users. And uh, therefore, the upstream data rates are often slower during high user, high usage hours in areas over the subscription. Uh, the fiber, such as Fios, this option requires fiber installation directly to your home. Uh, then you got the Wi-Fi. You got the municipal Wi-Fi, cellular, satellite, and WiMAX. Uh, so please write those just the top, just the bullet points, okay? And the VPN technologies. So please write down, VPN is very important. You can actually get a, your own VPN free using OPN Val, uh, uh, Open VPN. But I want you to know that they, here are the benefits, write down the benefits. Cost saving, security, sca scalability, compatibility with broadband technology. Right, it can be implemented from site to site or remote access. All right, we'll try to set up uh, a class activity when we can do a site to site VPN. All right, so ISB have connectivity options. Uh, we talked about that, and then here's your broadband solutions. So write those down. Those are your broadband solutions for connections to your broadband. All right, and that's it. So please submit everything.
I ask you to write down and I'll see you on the next video.